Welcome back to our review of South Africa 2010, the 19th World Championship of Football. The round of 16 kicked off at Nelson Mandela Bay Stadium in Port Elizabeth, where Uruguay met South Korea. Your commentator, Gary Bloom. Cavani stabs the ball wide and full man will get there. Great opportunity for Luis Suarez, who gives Uruguay the lead. His second goal of the competition. Uruguay set course for Johannesburg. Fulham scampered across and really the Korean Republic fell asleep here. The ball should never have been allowed to travel right across the goal. The goalkeeper missed it. Suarez didn't miss it. And towards Lee dung -Guk. Goalkeeper hesitated, there's the equaliser. Lee chung Young makes it 1-1. And the Korean Republic are right back in the World Cup. They're so dangerous at these set plays. Goalkeeper came off his line and was caught in no man's land. Over Cavani's head. Suarez. Still Suarez. Brilliant goal! Luis Suarez could well have scored the goal to take Uruguay into the quarterfinals of the World Cup. Stepped inside one challenge, and look at the bend and dip on that one. That's why he is one of the best goal scorers in European football. They've got an opportunity to be forward here now. Jan is on the right, he'll go for goal with a shot. What a start here! Kevin Prince Boateng for Ghana with five minutes on the clock. It's a super start for the Black Stars. Donovan's touch to Dempsey. It is Clint Dempsey. Down he goes. That will be a penalty kick. Clint Dempsey is the one who beats the ground. Jonathan Mensah was the one who brought him down and gets the yellow card. What a moment. For Landon Donovan. It's in off the upright. The United States are back in business. Now that's hooked forward. Here's a chase for Gian. He's one on two. It is Gian. He's in the area. He scores! Ghana are back in front. A goal of individual brilliance from a Samoa Gian. He's the dance leader. He's the top goal scorer. He's their boy. He is their black star. He gets all their important goals. He took on the two American defenders all by himself. It's a do-it-yourself goal from a Samoa Gian, which will go down in Ghanaian history. Neuer of Schalke. Oh, and he might... The uh, closer might get through here, and he might still get there. He has got there. Goal given for Germany. And it's the main man again. Come the World Cup. Come Miroslav Closer. Erzil. That's lovely play. Closer. This is Muller. And now for Podolski. Just taking it wide with the touch, but he still finds the net unerringly. And Germany lead England by two goals to nil. They are picking their way through. Gerard to hang it up and Neuer's beaten in the air by Upson and England have got one back it's game on again for the second time in his short international career Matt Upson has scored against Germany and England now are believing they can turn this round straight away Lampard is it over the line Lampard was short. Oh my goodness, shades of 1966. And now it's three against two. If Germany play this right, England could be in trouble. 
Schweinsteiger. And the chance is on. The goal is on. Thomas Muller, 3-1. They broke and they scored. And possibly they've broken England's resistance. Joe Cole. And Ozil has got away from Gareth Barry. Muller's coming in from the opposite flank. Ozil can put it on the plate for him. Here it is, four. England ripped apart again. Again, it all came from England, camped inside their own half. But once England lose possession, closer down the line here for Ozil. Too quick for Gareth Barry. Held his nerve, Muller in support. And no mistake from Thomas Muller. Germany over the horizon and away. But it's found a way into Messi here. Messi this time, and this is the chance for Tevez. And surely Messi now, surely a goal. What a strange goal it is, but Argentina lead. Carlos Tevez is the name on the goal in Soccer City. Argentina have first blood against Mexico. Certainly an element of fortune. Oh, what a horrible mistake. Let's them in for a second. Surely, what on earth was the Mexican defender doing there? Higuain has his fourth goal of the World Cup. They've all come in this stadium, which is a light now. He will not get an easier goal in the World Cup than that. All smiles down there for Maradona, who punches the air, the hand of God again. Oh, it's dangerous here. It is Tevez. And again, he'll go for goal. Blinding goal! Fabulous strike. If his first one was debatable, his second is delightful. Carlos Tevez with one of the goals of the World Cup. It lights up the occasion and is fitting for any World Cup finals match. Winning team in Peru a few years ago. Up to the edge of the area, good turn, clever play, Hernandez! That is a super strike from a young superstar who is making his name in this game. He's destined for Manchester United next season. He's given Mexico a glimmer of hope. And we've had a glimpse of a rare talent here. Javier Hernandez. Robin giving chase, is in behind Zabavnik here. Arjen Robin starting his first match of these World Cup finals. It's Robin! That's why they needed him. Robin has arrived in South Africa. Kat flicks the ball on. Great chance here for the Netherlands. Surely it's Schneider who drives the Netherlands into the quarterfinals. The Dutch are going to Port Elizabeth. Jakubko yeah, again. Can he stay on his feet here and score? Penalty. Foul by Stakelenburg and a yellow card for the goalkeeper. What a time for Slovakia to be awarded a spot kick. The second penalty that the Netherlands have conceded here in South Africa. And as you can see, Jakubko left his trailing leg there in the goalkeeper's wake. And this really shouldn't have been a spot kick. Vitek. It's all over. It's the last kick of the game. It's Mike on. And the header this time is in. Juan has found the range. And Brazil have the lead.
He had a couple of his teammates providing support, preventing defenders getting to him. Sanchez away by Michael. Robinho adding some pace to the occasion again. Luis Fabiano in the middle. Kakas made a late run. Luis Fabiano's on side and will score a second. Brazil have a second just on side. Spot on by the officials and spot on by Luis Fabiano. Dunga's boys are doing it again. Here's Ramirez. Oh, fantastic from Robinho. Wonderful from Brazil. And the Samba beat goes on and on and on. They are looking unstoppable now. Here's a chance too. Oh, terrific effort from Matsui. It's ruckless the crossbar. So a game that was slumbering has just come to life. And Daisuke Matsui with a ahead of a big, big 30 minutes ahead of them. Japan's third kick. Kamano again with a short run-up. Always oh, hit the crossbar, and it's the first miss. And Kamano is going to be heartbroken. It's a clear advantage to Paraguay now. If Cardozo scores, Paraguay are through. And he will know the weight of expectation that rests on his shoulders. The Japanese on their knees. Oscar Cardozo, with that famous left foot of his, rolls it in and rolls Paraguay home. They're into the last eight for the first time in their history. Just one penalty missed, but that was all it took. They'll look for the movement ahead, slots it through to the uh, far side to Cap de Vila eventually. Excellent movement. Portugal have not a touch on the ball, I don't think, yet. It'd be ironic if Spain scored before Portugal touched it and Eduardo is forced into the evening's first save and he got the crowd in Cape Town roaring right from the off and it is Torres who shows he's in the mood for his first goal of this World Cup fine effort coming up to 20 minutes played Spain nil Portugal nil Quancho's made a brilliant break here and he continues running Portugal a big big chance for them and the shot is beaten away by Casillas surely no, he gets his fingers on the ball twice there, does Casillas. First of all, to keep out the effort from Thiago, and then under the second challenge, he did his job as well. David Villa. Sergio Ramos. Goes for the high ball in, and Lorente produces a stop of some reactionary brilliance from Eduardo. Almost an inspired... They call the kid David Villa. The intricate build-up inevitably involved in Iesta, poked through the eye of the needle and prodded second time beyond Eduardo into the Portuguese net. It'll be back into the danger area. It's got through, but it will be uh, a yellow card here. Oh, it's a red card. Well, the referee has taken some dramatic action here, I have to say, that I was surprised about, but Ricardo Costa... A red card comes out for Costa, the Portuguese defender. There seems to be some sympathy for him. So, La Furia Roja's win over Iberian rival Portugal sets up a clash with Paraguay in the quarter-finals. Holland would face Brazil in a replay of the 1994 meeting between the two nations at the same stage. And in another repeat, Argentina would aim to avenge their 2006 defeat at the hands of Germany. 
Time for a short break and we'll be back with all the quarter-final action from South Africa 2010. Welcome back to our review of South Africa 2010, the 19th World Championship of Football. The quarterfinals kicked off at Nelson Mandela Bay Stadium in Port Elizabeth, where the Netherlands were keen to avenge a heartbreaking semi-final loss to Brazil at the 1998 finals. Your commentator, Gary Bloom. Card in his pocket. That surely is a yellow card. And how Mitchell Bastos is going to stay on the field. Goodness only knows. This is a contentious decision because what a mistake there by Julio Cesar. Goalkeeper and defender went for the same ball. Goodness only knows why. Just one or two signs of the Netherlands growing in confidence and just beginning to attack. Brazil aren't done yet though. It's Kaká, two against two, Kaká for Brazil. Took a deflection, out for the corner. And still, the Netherlands are not assured of their place in the last four. De Jong. They've done it! Brazil have gone! And the Netherlands are through to the semi-finals in Cape Town. Extraordinary scenes here in Port Elizabeth. They've achieved the impossible. They've come from behind. And Brazil have crashed out and had a player sent off. All that after they had the lead. What joy for the Dutch. Mensa takes it on the chest, puts it through, then Muntari. If they're going to get a goal, they're going to have to get it in the next 20 seconds, and Muntari goes for goal! What did I say? With 15 seconds on the clock in the opening half, Africa strikes, Ghana strikes, Sully Muntari strikes, and amazingly, it's Uruguay nil, Ghana won just when it seemed as though we would get to a break without his goal. Diego Forlan, a crucial moment in the match for Uruguay! Goal, Forlan! Clinically struck. And that's what makes him such a dangerous player. Kingston couldn't get anywhere near it. And Diego Forlan, who's become a real superstar for Uruguay over the last few years, has brought them back level. Tavares looks grim, grimly concerned that it could just slip away for Uruguay here at the very death of the match. Mensa will be one of those up for it. It's going to get the flick in, and Muslera, oh, cleared on the line, and cleared on the line a second. The uh, referee's assistant is fucking... What a dramatic thing. There's a red card coming out as well. Well, there had to be drama right at the end here, and the red card is shown. What a finish to the match. Asamwa Jian has the opportunity to send Ghana into the semi-finals of the World Cup. And he hits the bar! Unbelievable! Uruguay 2, Ghana... Schweinsteiger with the free kick, it's a dangerous one! Germany leads! Quite extraordinary! The game explodes with the header from Thomas Muller. It's Muller's third goal in two games. The Chancellor leads the applause. Germany on the scoreboard with one of the quickest goals in the World Cup finals. Maradona's got something to think about. His defenders were nowhere there as Muller drifted across in front of them. His header was too strong for goalkeeper Romero. It's a dream start for the Germans. Kedira. 
Plenty of options here. This is their chance, surely, for Germany now. Got to be closer. We'll walk it in. And Germany may just be walking into the semi-finals of the World Cup. And it could not have been simpler. Podolski has put it on a plate for Miroslav Closer. That must have been a joyous sight, an empty net into which to walk the ball. And Germany looking for more goals. To really cement their place in the semi-finals, and they're queuing up again here. It's going to be put on the plate. Germany has three. Germany is going into the semi-finals. Argentina is going out, and Anna Friedrich's first ever international goal in 77 games gets the Chancellor on the march. The running was done by Schweinsteiger. He just went beyond helpless defenders who, frankly, had packed it in. And Schweinsteiger just pushes the ball into the path of the defender Friedrich, and that is what they call a toe poke. Messi blocked off, Mertesacker away. And uh, although I'd say won it for Argentina, all he's done is act as the mainspring for a German raid, which has three forward again. Here is the cross in for Closer, four for Germany, two for Closer. And this is going to go down as one of the greatest days for German football in World Cup history with two of the four goals that have destroyed Lionel Messi's day, is edging ever closer to becoming the top World Cup scorer of all time. And you wonder if Maradona will come back from this. Can they get this one goal? Messi! No. Neuer makes the stop. A pop on the cheeks from Lionel Messi. The whistle of the referee, it ends, it signals the end, maybe for the coach of Argentina, who knows? Diego Maradona has been thrashed. As he tried to make his run. Here comes Cardozo. On that left foot, Casillas with a fantastic save. Getting down and holding on, but there was an arm on the shoulder. Here comes Xavi Alonso, no mistakes, and Spain have the lead! But they don't because it's going to have to be taken again. There was a Spanish player inside the box. So Xavi Alonso is going to have to do it all over again. Nobody will make the mistake of going in the box this time. Xavi Alonso. Oh, he's saved! Here's Fabregas, crushed away, and Paraguay survived. There are two goalkeepers. 2008 European Championship Final. The other semi-final pits the Dutch against Uruguay. La Celeste aiming for their first appearance in the World Cup Final since 1950. Time for a short break and we'll be back with all the semi-final action from South Africa 2010. Welcome back to our review of South Africa 2010, the 19th World Championship of Football. Cape Town was the venue for the first semi-final as a Diego Forlan inspired Uruguay aimed to upset Dutch dreams of the first ever World Cup title. Your man with the microphone at Greenpoint Stadium is John Helm. Not the best ball from Snyder, but it does reach Kept. There's relief in the end, strangely, to the Netherlands. Uruguay gave it their all, but their all was not quite good enough. Little move, bit of movement ahead of him for PK here, including um, that of Pedro, who has been the liveliest player on the pitch so far, and sliding it in for Villa. Well, well watched by Neuer, because Villa just got ahead of the defence there. And the first real chance of the night. And a test here for Manuel Neuer. Iniesta, back to Xavi. Still a crowded penalty area. Xavi Alonso, here's Iniesta again. Little triangle of passes and driven in, and Puyol! Well, it came to him at a flash. And he did well to get his head onto it. 
The speed it was driven in by Iniesta. Just steering it over when it could so easily have been the opener from Carlos Puyol. Ozil's made a little run ahead of him, it's square to Trukowski, who'll have a go on the left foot, and Casillas had to get down to make a very smart save. Well, he would have been disappointed had that sneaked in and his left hand upright, but even so, it needed his total concentration, and he just got a hand to that as well. Well, Klos has done ever so well to get ahead of Puyol, and he's got Ozil here, Ozil now with a chance. Well, he's gone down and looks plaintively at the referee. Well, he's getting a little closer. But he's yet to force a save from Manuel Neuer. Camp de Vier. Nice touch from Iniesta. Has Camp de Vier on his way. Just behind Xavi Alonso. Pedro! Good save by the goalkeeper. Still not away. It's Iniesta from the tightest of angles. And Vier was inches away from turning it in. It's the closest they've got, Marcel Janssen. Who has it again, now Podolski. Herzl, space here for Podolski, and the shot is beaten away. Tony Cruz found a position. Podolski's ball over and Cruz. Finding Casillas in his way. Still impossible to pick a winner with any certainty at this stage, but it is Spain who just have the advantage here. Xavi's corner. Oh, and it's Puyol! And it's the man from the back who has given Spain the lead. And with 73 minutes played, it is Carlos Puyol who has given them the platform. Well, Puyol and Piquet were fighting amongst themselves there to get their header first. And that might be enough. He's desperate to keep it in. It is! This Spanish side are the history boys. They've finally done it. Spain are in a World Cup final for the very first time ever. And after all those decades of promise, it is finally fulfilled. And with both semi-finals coming to a conclusion, it will be a new name added on the list of World Cup winners as Holland prepares to face Spain. Before that though, there was the little matter of the match for third place between Uruguay and Germany. Eaton. Cavani with a goal, and Uruguay are back level. Must have enjoyed this moment. Just hit down on the volley by Diego Forlan. But terrific play here by Aravalo, and a goal that Hans York but could do absolutely nothing about. And now Forlan has five as well. And Kadira takes full advantage with a header into the unguarded quarter of the net. And Germany lead by three goals to two. Congratulations to Germany on clinching third place. On to the big one now, the final of the 2010 FIFA World Cup. The Netherlands up against European champion Spain from Johannesburg. Who would emerge as the winner for the very first time? Your commentary team at Soccer City, Craig Foster and David Bashir. Delivers deep. The header's on target. Excellent save. It's not done with yet. And at the second effort, it was blocked by Stekelenburg. What a sharp save by the uh, Dutch number one between the posts. Ramos thought that was in. Spain hammering away at the Dutch goal. Xavi. Looking for the option. Xavi Alonso back post. And Villa ripples the side netting, looking for his sixth goal. Xavi tries to cushion the ball as Alonso's men very heavily. And will this be another yellow card? And rightly so. That's an awful, that's an awful, awful challenge. Watch it again. I'm not sure what he thinks he's doing there. 
Kemp makes the run. It's delivered deep. Heitinger with a central header. And it's flicked forward. Spain not out of trouble yet. Van Persie. Out wide. Robin strikes it. And denied by Casillas at the near post. It was a wonderful strike. But an even better save. Now Webb having a chat to the players holding in the area. And he gets contact on the header this time. A glancing one. Puyol. And it almost uh, fell to Gerard Piquet. Ian Robin should have scored in that position. Well, there's the key to the entire Dutch tournament. Two players, Wesley Schneider, Arian Robin. And Casillas makes a magnificent save off his right boot. Extended it was too. Right off the toe. Going the other way as well. Rob N, so disappointed he didn't finish there. Central area could go both sides. In the path here of Ramos. Xavi. Iniesta. Out wide is Navas. In the middle, Davavia. Arriving Iniesta. High Tinger. Davavia. Can't find the target. It was Van Bronckhorst doing enough. And once again, Spain denied with the deflection. Spain corner. Back post to free header. And Sergio Ramos. And that was the moment for Spain. It was a Puyol like semi final moment. Spain tries to get a meaningful touch. And halfway now, the flick on was a very good. Robin will outpace Puyol. Robin's in. Ian Robin. Well, the defender did just enough. Howard Webb has been verbally attacked by Ian Robin. He felt he was fouled. It was very close. Van Bommel. Schneider, was he fouled? The referee thought not. And Fabregas is released. Big chance, Spain. What a save. Stecklenburg. Both goalkeepers have produced the marvellous efforts. The party starts from the Canary Islands to the north of Spain. So the drama ends at Soccer City and it is Spain who put their name on the World Cup trophy for the first time, victorious over Holland. Craig is back with me. Craig. Uh, uh, on that final and the, and the Spanish victory overall, deserved or not, uh, appropriate or not? Oh, on both counts, from me, is an emphatic yes. Uh, football won the day, and this is not always the case, but you know, we said before the final that it was not just a football match now, it became much more, with the entire world watching almost a billion people, seeing what was really, in essence, a philosophical battle. It was a war between idealism and pragmatism. Uh, and it was all the more powerful because Holland had changed from the former to the latter and felt that they could no, actually not win in an idealistic way. Uh, Spain, for their part, uh, proved that not only can you, but that, in fact, winning football is beautiful football. Um, that. Uh, you know, this, this term that the Dutch used throughout the tournament, which we hate so much, saying we're happy to win ugly, it was proven by the Spanish that it's an oxymoron. In fact, there's no such thing that what you do in football is you win beautifully. Uh, and playing with the ball, playing in the ascendancy, passing the football, everything that Spain have become so renowned for over the last couple of years, is what brings success in football. And in the end, that's the greatest lesson for the world game, for billions of people watching around the world uh, that you can chase a grand vision and get there in the end uh, that you can hold true to a very precise ideal and not compromise uh, and that if you play true to your culture and uh, and you don't bring any negativity into it whatsoever then in the end like Spain you can actually prevail 
Well, speaking of uh, staying tr uh, true to one's culture, there have been some disappointments uh, in this World Cup, uh, unexpected disappointments. Uh, I speak of Australia, of course, which didn't uh, stay true to its culture, at least not for the, for, for the opening game. Uh, the Africans failed, and partly, probably because they weren't African enough. And of course, there were other failures, like uh, notably France, Italy, yeah. and England, who also are included. Uh, the Italians have very much a, a defensive, cultural mentality, anyway, for various reasons. Uh, but the French have lost their identity. And the thing about the Dutch in the final, and the reason why they could not win this tournament and did not deserve to win is because they abandoned their culture. They lost their football integrity. Uh, they compromised and therefore they were never going to win. Uh, for us, I guess we have to review it, but it started in really disgrace. Uh, and uh, to see Australia go into a game that should never ever happen again against Germany to play in what was the most un-Australian of fashions, and that is to be beaten before you even take the park. From, a, from an approach or a tactical perspective, that is to really capitulate and put the white flag up and say, we're not as good as you, we're going to come out just to try and defend, we're going to play a team that is not our best, it doesn't represent what we've built in the last four years, let alone the last 50, these are the best kids that we can put on the park and we're not going to do it. That is a moment that uh, we'll never forget, certainly I will never forgive, uh, but it's a very powerful lesson for Australian football. And uh, the demise of Brazil was another one uh, in the end which was uh, indicative of, uh, of a country which has uh, lost its way because it didn't uh, stay true its tradition, to its uh, traditions. Exactly, and they'll have to now return to it. But what's interesting is between the three different cultures, see we're an emerging one and we're a developing football culture and we're trying to find our own way, we're trying to find our own style. And the reason why the Germany game is so important is because the lesson that we extract from it, from all of Australia, everyone, is that we must bring our culture to bear with the correct tactics and play as Australians. Never take a backward step. Now, for Brazil and uh, Holland, it's very interesting because what I like about the Brazilian fans is they were never pleased with the way that Dunga played. That's the difference between the two countries. When Brazilian fans in the last two years said, well, yes, we won the Copa America, yes, you won the Confederations Cup, but we still don't like you and we don't like your football. That is how you propagate a proper football culture that brings five titles. So even if they had won, many Brazilians had already abandoned the team and said, yes, we have six titles, but we are in no way pleased with the last one because that's not us. That's how you win in football. Now, on the Dutch side, the disappointment for me was this, and that's why I said that they uh, lost their football integrity, because they were so desperate to win, they abandoned everything they've built, and the fans themselves actually bought into this prospect that you could win without playing football, when in fact, you cannot. The media didn't, and the Dutch media still hammered Van Marwijk and still criticised and still questioned all the way through. And it's to them that my congratulations go, because we know here it's often it's not easy at all, right? Because fans want ultimately to be sold a vision of a result. But the Brazilians were the smart ones. And for me now, it's the Dutch who have to go back and change again and say, well, we were, we were sold a false package. We go back to what we are, and ultimately, if we're good enough, we'll be able to win. That's also the lesson for us. Which is what the Brazilians are going to do as well. OK, finally, Foz, uh, South Africa as a, as a host nation. Uh, the impact, the, the, the quality that they delivered as a host country and how the world may have benefited uh, from this World Cup being held uh, in, in the Rainbow Nation. Perception. Uh, the, the perception of humanity now, of Africa in general, and of course, primarily South Africa, has changed fundamentally. And that's what football does. Uh, we said before the tournament that it's not just, uh, uh, the FIFA World Cup is not just about the ball. The football itself is simply a vehicle through which every culture comes to play. It's the vehicle through which humanity comes together to shake hands and to see each other uh, and to learn about each other. And all of us learnt more about Africa in 30 days, 31 days, than probably, certainly for me and for most fans, than we knew before and would ever have learnt in our life. Perception has changed 
and it's changed for good. And that's what the FIFA World Cup can bring. All right, Foss, thank you okay. once again, and thank you for the last month. Don't forget to tune into the all new World Game Show, which makes its return to a new channel and a new time slot. From Monday, August the 2nd, you'll find us on SBS2 each and every Monday night from 9.30 p.m. Remember to head online for the latest news, blogs and exclusive content on the best football website in the land. Our address again, sbs.com.au slash the world game. And you can add your voice to our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter. That's it from Cape Town for this World Cup. We hope you enjoyed our coverage of the 19th World Championship of Football. From the whole team in Sydney, here in Cape Town, and from the World Game, goodbye. You're gonna see the way I see things Break out the box that keep you sealed in Someday you find the real thing Shabalala one on one. South Africa score. So Piway Shabalala rocks the nation. Lampard! Is it over the line? Lampard was short. Oh my goodness, shades of 1966. Here's a moment in the match for Uruguay! Goal for that! Again, he'll go for goal, blinding goal! And it's David Villa! Who else? Oh, a touch in! New Zealand remarkably! Oh, magical by Diego Fora!
from first off. That has got to be one of the great goals of the World Cup finals. And it's Puyol! And it's the man from the back who has given Spain the lead. Spain are in a World Cup final. se me ocurre animar a la selección española. Llevo siete mundiales con la selección española en Sudáfrica y oiréis mi bombo cuando ganemos la copa. 